What's going on guys? This is building a stock market tracker with React.js part five. As always, definitely check down in the description for free stuff that we're giving away and also subscribe to the channel if you're liking this series and wanna stay up to date with what we're up to over here. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump in. So in the last couple of episodes in this series, we set up uh, the ability to pull data back from the IEX cloud and we also did some refactoring. And one of the things that we discovered in the process was that we were not getting back data at the time of trading during the day. So we were getting back the day of yesterday or the data from yesterday. Well, an interesting development has occurred. And honestly, I have no idea why because I have not touched the code. So I came in today and I started looking at this. And we're actually getting back data from the previous minute. So you can see here that actually it's, so this is Eastern time and I'm in Central time, so I'm an hour behind, but you can see that we're getting data from a minute ago. So I don't have an explanation as to why that's happening, but I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. We're not gonna do anything different based on that information. That's why we actually refactored all of this the way that we did is because we don't want to depend on uh, one data source if we don't have to. Um, so in a future video, we'll probably go through and look at other data sources we could use to incorporate here. Uh, but anyway, it's cool. So uh, if you're looking at this sometime in the future and you're seeing this result or the other result, you know, I, I'm actually not sure why that's happening. All right, so in this video, I wanna go ahead and start roughing in the actual layout of the application that I have in mind. So right now we just have this basic table here, um, but that's not what we ultimately wanna have. So we're not gonna need this and we're not gonna need this because we're not really gonna mess with those much. Um, we'll keep stock row open because what we're actually gonna end up doing is kind of replacing it. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in here. Okay, so first thing, let's just keep this table, but let's comment this out for now. And then inside of here, I'm going to add another div, class name equals, uh, what should it be, colmd4 maybe? Let me see if I'm actually on a medium size uh, screen with the way I have my window position there. Okay, and then I'm going to do another div class name equals card. And let's see what we get. Okay, it did not like my comments. Let me just go ahead and like kill that. Okay. So then we've got, so you can kind of barely see a faint outline of our card up there. Um, maybe I'm gonna make that, uh, well, well, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, div class name equals card body. Okay, so now you can see here we have a little card popping in place. That's gonna to be too narrow for the screen size I'm looking at. That's probably a little bit better. Okay, um, let's go ahead and bump this thing down, MT5, like we had the table. Um, and let's see, what else should we, should we do here? So what I'm ultimately gonna do is have like a thing at the top, like in my first design that I showed with the my current portfolio value. And then every time the screen updates, it's gonna change the value based on the data we're getting back. Okay, so let's keep going here. So what I'm actually gonna do to start is just kind of uh, rough in the stocks in the way that I'm kind of seeing them. Um, so I'm gonna put an unordered list, class name equals list group. And I think it's list group flush. And this is all coming from Bootstrap. So if you're using something else, you'll have to kind of do something that mimics this design. And then inside of here, let's do um, li class name equals list group item. And then let's just put apple. And let's see what this looks like. 
Okay, so let's add a couple of these things and see what we have here. Okay, so my list group flush didn't work out quite right. So let me check out what's going on with that. Okay, looks like I might need to not put these inside of the card body. That might be the problem. Let's see if I remove that and save that, if that fixes it. Okay, yeah, that's what I was expecting. So this is all definitely going to change a little bit, but I wanna just kind of uh, start putting in what's the beginning of a design a little bit that's just gonna I don't know, get us started on something that's a little bit more interesting looking than a table. Um, so I'm going to bold Apple. I need to put a price in here, so let's just make up one, 456.78. Um, and let's see, then we might want to put, you know, the change today. So we could say, um, let's see here. So let's put this in a span tag and we'll call this class name equals change maybe. And let's, let's do something like plus $12 and 34 cents. And I'm not going to get this percent calculation, right? Cause it's not important right now. Um, and maybe we want to add, well, let's just see what that does, like see how that fits on the line. Okay, that's not bad. Um, so let's see if we can style this a little bit. So we could say something like um, change style equals an object. And then we want to say something like color that, and that should be a hex code probably. And then here, I'm gonna say style equals change style. Let's see, I haven't actually done this before, so let's see what this does. Change style is not defined, so we need to make that a const. Okay, cool, so that's working. So now I wanna say uh, font size, and then let's do like uh, 0.8 rem. Now that we need tech quotes. We'll make it smaller and let's add some space at the beginning of this thing can we do this here so just uh, well let's add a margin left actually let's make it like uh, five pixels do we need a mar do we need a pixels here what happens if we just save like that that works okay that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've been doing CSS and SAS in Rails projects for quite a long time, and this is kind of strange, but it's pretty cool, I think. So, all right, so what do we wanna do now? What we wanna do is actually start moving this down into our stock row. So, and I think it's fair to call this a row. And it's not a table row, but I don't really wanna rename it, I don't think. So, let's open that up and let's go ahead and just copy um, let's go ahead and copy this line or cut it I guess and let's paste it down here in the return and let's kind of fill in with what we do have and then we'll leave some other placeholders so we can say that's the ticker um, that's going to be the price and let's go ahead and leave a dollar sign there and the other stuff we don't have right now so let's go ahead and take that out change style is not defined because we put it over here okay and then we can go ahead and just put this at the top like we had it okay now, instead of list here, let's go ahead and put our stock row, and then we'll say um, ticker equals apple. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we have it all in lowercase, so we can fix that. Um, and then we want to have a few down here, so we can do, you know, um, Google. Um, and then what do we have in Microsoft 
and we had Tesla. All right, let's, let's see what we got here. So Tesla is not coming in for the past minute. All right, well still, that's kind of cool. Um, you can see we have some issues here with numbered display. So that should have a comma and uh, decimal places afterwards, probably. We want to uppercase these most likely. Um, so we want to modify the presentation just a little bit. So we probably need to do one more short video. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one here. Um, but we need to do one more short video on the actual style and presentation. We need to find a way to add back the date time of uh, this data so that we can see, you know, what we're looking at here. Um, maybe that should go above, you know, the whole thing or below in like a little footer or something like that so that we know when the data came from. Um, we probably, well don't probably, we need to change this to actually be real data. So that'll probably be the video after. So what we want to do is get not only the current value, but get the data from the previous day. So the very end of the previous day, and then we'll calculate how it has changed during the current day. So that'll be the video after we kind of finish up this styling. And then I suppose three videos from now, approximately these can change depending on how complicated some of this stuff is but uh, then we want to actually let you build your own list in the UI here so we've got some style changes to make in the next video um, then getting real numbers for the percent changes coming in and then adding your own stocks so that's it for this video um, it's pretty simple so far I think in the next two to three videos it's gonna start to ramp up and get a lot cooler um, so stick around if you're interested in this and if you're enjoying this, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, but with all that said, I will talk to you in the next episode.